Hello! Welcome back to the studio. Today's video is a little bit different because I'm sharing one of my guilty pleasures with you. I really enjoy watercolor swatches. I enjoy swatching watercolors myself um, on sheets like this one that I shared in a previous video. And I also enjoy watching swatching videos. Recently, I came across this Daniel Smith Mineral Marvels set. Um, these are watercolor dot cards from their Primatec collection, so it's the full Primatec range of 36 watercolors. Now, Daniel Smith also offers a full set of watercolors to try out. Um, this is the Daniel Smith 238 color set, uh, which is almost their complete line. But these dots are very small. They're a little bit bigger than some other brands, um, but they're still quite small for the Primatec paints, which tend to be a little bit tougher to re-wet in some cases. So, I was really excited when I found out that my local art store was carrying these Mineral Marvel sets. And these have much larger dot cards. Um, so you'll see the dots are quite large here. Recently, I've started remaking my swatches so that I have consistent swatches of all of the watercolors that I've tried. And so I decided to use this Mineral Marvel set to swatch all of the uh, Permatec paints. So this video is going to be a little bit different from my other videos. Um, this won't be sped up at all, I'm, and it'll be very minimally edited. I'm just going to be swatching all of these colors. Um, and that's a guilty pleasure of mine. I like watching other YouTubers swatch paints, including paints even that I've already swatched. So um, let me know if I'm just a weirdo down in the comments below, or what your guilty pleasures are in terms of uh, YouTube videos, and without further ado, let's get into this video. If you're new here, welcome! My name is Lee. I'm a botanical and natural science illustrator based in Kitchener-Waterloo, Canada. On this channel, I share watercolor techniques and tips and some insights into my daily life as an illustrator. If this is content that you're interested in, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. This Amazonite Genuine is this really beautiful bluish green color. It's, I would describe it as, it's somewhere in between a phthalo, um, a phthalo green blue shade or a viridian, both in behavior and in tinting strength. So a phthalo green is extremely strongly tinting. Um, whereas a viridian is a very similar shade, but it's very weak tinting and slightly granulating. And I would say that the Amazonite Genuine, um, it behaves in between those two things. It is a little bit more of a bluer shade um, than either of them, uh, but it's, uh, it's not quite as um, assertive as a phthalo, but it's not the same really difficult to re-wet wimpy color as a Viridian. Um, and so it's actually a really useful paint. And sometimes I've included Amazonite Genuine in place of either a Thalo or Viridian in my main palettes. It's really lovely. Um, I haven't had it in one of my palettes in a while, but I may reintroduce it. Um, cause just swatching this out, I've been reminded of how much I really like this color. And so I'm just going to set this up here and work on my next paint. So the next paint is going to be this Fuchsite Genuine. Um, and this is a very minty color and it's got some sparkle to it that'll be more visible, I think, as it dries. Um, I struggle a little with sparkly paints, um, just because I do a lot of work for reproduction, so sparkly paints are, are a bit of a challenge, uh, but it's really pretty. Um, and it's this beautiful minty green color, like a, 
Um, if you think of uh, like, you know that really fakey mint chocolate chip ice cream? That was my favorite flavor growing up. <laughs> and this reminds me a lot of that. is jadeite um, and so jadeite I believe is one of a couple of different minerals that are referred to as the gemstone jade if I recall correctly so uh, these Primatech paints Daniel Smith um, I mean they claim they claim they're made out of genuine uh, gemstones. Um, in some cases there's some question about whether there might be some other additives uh, mixed in with these paints. Um, so one of them is that amazonite which is very very powerful for what people who are familiar with gemstones would expect and I think the jadeite is another one like that where to get um, a jadeite this strong in pigment would be very expensive. Uh, so uh, there's some question about sourcing and whether they're adding some other uh, additives in these paints to make them look this bright. But regardless, they're really beautiful, beautiful paints um, and they have some really unique characteristics. So this is a really deep green with a little bit of uh, granulation or variation. I'm sorry, my cat has been hanging around my art table so there's a uh, there's a cat here <laughs> and now I've messed this up okay um, so now I'm just gonna leave that there and next is serpentine and serpentine was another one of the first Primatex that I added to my personal collection um, here let's just move these over here um, and serpentine is this beautiful yellowish mossy green color and it separates and there's some little um, brown and purple flecks that appear as it dries. There's some variation within the green where some areas are more brownish and some areas are more yellowish. Uh, it looks like a like a mossy a uh, riverbank or a meadow. Um, really beautiful color on its own. Um, and I have to say these dots are really a pleasure to work with. I recently swatched the Windsor Newton dot card that has the tiniest little watercolor dots I've ever seen. And these Primatech dots are just really huge and contain a lot of paint by comparison. Um, so it's really nice to not have to worry too, too much about getting enough paint on these swatches. So that's what these little stars up at the top of these samples mean. I've put a little star for my swatch binder beside samples where I had a substantial sample. So even though these are dot cards, because they're large dot cards, I decided to mark them with a star. And I don't know what this is. I have a blank one. So I may have forgotten to fill one. So moving on to here, we have Rhodonite Genuine. Um, and this is interesting. They've marked the majority of their Primatech colors as light fastness one or ASTM one, um, meaning they're not light sensitive, um, which is interesting and, and it's an interesting choice of marking in rhodonite's case because it darkens. Now it's not really an effect to light, it's affected by oxygen. Um, so it oxidizes and becomes darker. Now it is, I think, also affected somewhat by light in that 
rhodonite is the um, natural form of that uh, fluorescent pigment that's used in opera colors. Um, rhodonite is the like is the natural mineral equivalent. Um, it's a precursor to rhodamine dye, if I recall correctly. Um, so it definitely will change. It won't stay this very, very bright pink color. It turns much more uh, like darker and more brownish over time, whether or not it's exposed to light. It, ex it, it seems to turn more quickly when it's exposed to light but I would disagree with this light fastness rating. However, this is a really pretty color. If you don't care about permanency, it's absolutely gorgeous and it's really cool that they're able to get such a bright pink color, especially from a natural mineral. Here we have Garnet Genuine. Um, So, this is a sort of earthy red color. Um, it's like more reddish than a burnt sienna, uh, but it's got some of that same characteristic. And let's get some more of this over here. If you look at my swatches above as they dry, you can see that they um, their granulation develops a little. Um, I'm looking at that Amazonite swatch and it's surprising me a little because it's showing a fair bit of granulation and both on their sheet and in my previous experience with this paint, it wouldn't show this sort of uh, color variation or granulation. I always found it to be a very smooth paint. So I don't know, I might try to re-swatch that later and see whether it's just this sample. Um, but it's a really beautiful color. Um, as is this it's garnet, it seems to be almost brightening as it dries, which is unusual and cool. Minnesota Pipestone. So this is sort of maybe like a Terracotta? Yeah, I would call this a terracotta color. It's very beautiful. Feels quite smooth. So this is the neat thing about Primatech paints, is a lot of gemstone paints often end up being very gritty or gummy. And um, some of the Primatex have a little bit of that effect, but in general, their behavior uh, seems really, really consistent um, compared to some gemstone paints released by other brands or made by handmade paint makers. The Primatech paints um, are really useful. They're, they're really like well-behaved paints um, given their gemstone origin. Okay. Bloodstone. That's a really cool name. I'm not familiar with all of the gemstones. Some people, uh, probably know more about these stones than I do. Um, so this seems to be a very dark, like almost a black, but it does have a reddish undertone. Um, Oh, this is gorgeous. There's some texture that's appearing as I paint this out. Yeah, okay. Oh, that's so pretty. It is so pretty. Okay. So I'm going to pre-wet these. 
Um, so they do tend to mostly re-wet pretty easily. There's a couple later on in this set that do take a little bit more to re-wet. Um, move these over so I don't have to move over my own samples to get water. Um, oh, that's gorgeous. So this is like a chestnut brown. That's got quite a bit of granulation. I think it's probably going to appear. I really like hematite paints in a lot of cases. Got hematite paints from a few different manufacturers, a few handmade paint makers. Um, I got some from Kremer, which is uh, mostly a pigment company, but they also sell some pre made paints. Um, a few different kinds of hematite. This one's different from any of the hematites I've tried before. Um, that were all I, darker and more, um, more of a black or purple tone. This one has a much more reddish tone. It's really beautiful. Really love that texture. That's gorgeous. Pimentite. So a lot of these Primatech paints have a lot of texture and variation to them. Um, and of course you can get the same sorts of textures and, granu uh, and granulation patterns by mixing various um, synthetic pigments or more traditional earth pigments. Um, but the Primatech paints, I have to say, are sort of a... They're a fun novelty. They tend to be a little bit pricey, but they all have such unique characteristics. They're really fun to play with. Um, just to have a tube of paint um, that has those characteristics, they're really quite cool. Uh, Pimentite is another paint that I actually have a Daniel Smith stick of it. Um, so not all of the Primatex are available as Daniel Smith uh, watercolor sticks, but those that are, this is a really, that's a really great way, um, like an affordable way to buy Primatex paints. Um, they have the Serpentine, Pimentite, and a few others, and it's great to get the... Uh, what am I doing? It's great to get the Pimentite, or sorry. It's great to get the Primatech paints in watercolor stick format because the watercolor sticks by Daniel Smith have a flat price point. Like, you don't pay more for higher series. Um, so you can get Pimentite or Serpentine Genuine um, in these watercolor sticks, which are, they're about, they are about the size of three full pans, um, which would be, I guess, I don't know, like 10 milliliters dried. Um, so a fairly sizable quantity, and they're about, um, in Canada, I can get them for about, usually about 12 to 13 Canadian dollars, um, which is about, nine or ten US dollars. I'll leave some links down below for where you can get these paints um, in both tube and stick form. Uh, but the sticks are a great deal for the paints that are available in sticks. Um, and so that's how I got the serpentine and the piemontite and they are beautiful. You'll see the piemontite as it dries it separates into this red under layer and this more brownish granulation. That's really cool. Um, Cyclorite. So later on, once these are dry, um, I will use the 
little area in the middle here of these swatches uh, to do a lifting test. I've also included all of the pigment information that's provided by the manufacturer on these swatches. Come on. So you can see there's a little bit of gumminess in this cyclorite. Um, like it's keeping brush strokes, which is usually there's a little bit, like there's a lot of a binder. Um, but you'll, you'll notice that they're all still very, very saturated and fairly easy to re-wet paints despite a little bit of gumminess in some cases. So a uh, really great job by Daniel Smith on formulating these paints. Here we have a um, Red Sands. Card? Okay, so let's go here. So the first one is this Bronze Eye Genuine. It seems to be taking a little moment. Okay. I'm using a synthetic brush by Rosemary Brush Company for these swatches. Um, I like swatching my dot cards with a synthetic brush um, just because it's a little bit more resistant and cheaper it's more resistant to scrubbing um, so I don't want to ruin my nice sable brushes by scrubbing dot cards um, but I do try to use um, hot press 100% cotton paper so this is uh, all arch or arches paper um, uh, one hundred percent cotton, one hundred and forty pound hot press. Um, now I use a variety of different brands of paper, but I always use cotton paper. I always use hot press, so that's what I do my swatches on. Um, hot press will show granulation a little bit differently than cold press. You'll see much larger patterns and more sort of bleeds and um, like ragged drying edges on hot press paper. Um, I use hot press paper because I paint a lot of details usually, so I, um, I need the control. I don't like my brush skipping around on top of um, paper texture. It's also a personal preference. I just prefer the feel of smooth paper. Um, but your paint will behave differently on hot press than it would on the more commonly used cold press. So if you're wondering why my swatches look maybe a little different than uh, someone else's swatches or um, your own samples of these same paints, that might be it. So the Bronzite Genuine and now this Red Fuchsite Genuine are both sparkly paints. And I'm not sure if you can see it, but I can see it quite clearly in this sample, how very sparkly this Red Fuchsite Genuine is. I think it's kind of neat because uh, one of the last samples here was also Fuchsite, but so different from this Red from that minty green to this muted sort of blood red. Um, and they are just different colors of the same mineral. That's cool. Uh, they're both very, very sparkly. So if you are a sparkly paint person, this one might be for you. It's really pretty. I will try to show later on um, 
some of the close-up textures of all of these paints. So now we're doing burnt bronzite and again this is another sparkly paint. So I wonder if all of the swatches on this card, I don't know if the Jasper is sparkly as well. Um, certainly the bronzite, the red fuchsite and the uh, burnt bronzite are all these sparkly paints and so this is a sparkly brown. Let me know down in the comments below uh, if you use sparkly paints, what you use sparkly paints for, because I have trouble coming, I find them really cool looking, but I never find a use for them. Uh, so let me know down in the comments below what you use sparkly paints for. Next time I'm swatching Red Jasper, I'm not really seeing, oh yeah, I think there is a sparkle in there too. So all of this um, dot card, these four paints are all sparkly reds. I also find the sparkles in paints, they're kind of like glitter. Um, I'm not sure if you've heard the saying, glitter is the herpes of art supplies. It gets everywhere. And so that's a, another issue that I found with sparkly paints, um, is that once I have any kind of sparkle in one of my palettes, it ends up everywhere. Um, and I'm not sure if that's just because I'm like a super messy painter or uh, if that's something that everyone else experiences as well. It's another thing you can let me know. How do you control sparkle and keep it from getting into all of your paints? Or do you like getting it into all of your paints? Okay, next we're on Baked Earths. That's four. Yava Pie Genuine. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, Yava Pie Genuine. Well, this is gorgeous. I really like this. It's subtle. It's like a nice warm brown. Now that being said, um, I don't have a, I'm not sure what um, price range this is in, uh, but many of the Primatex are in higher price brackets. Um, so even though this is a really pretty brown, uh, there's a lot of earth tones will be a series one or maybe a series two, um, which is to say they're quite cheap paints. Um, so if Yava Pie Genuine was uh, like a reasonably affordable paint, I really like the shade of this as an earth tone, but I'm not sure that I would buy it if it was a higher series at all. Okay, Sedona. Tell me what you think of the timing of this video. Like, should I speed this up? Or do you prefer to pay, uh, watch these swatch videos real time like me? Like, I'll just leave them on while I'm doing something fairly mindless. Um, and just glance up at them. Often while preparing my own swatches. Sometimes when I just don't have the brain power to do very much else, I'll just do a little swatching day where I watch someone else swatching um, while preparing my own swatches, and then I'll go over to swatching my own paints. Tiger's Eye Genuine. Now, I've never owned this paint, but I think I've swatched it before. I think what it does is it separates into a darker color and then a yellowier undertone. I recall correctly. Come on. So this one's again a little bit gummy. Not too bad. Uh, 
that, but not quite as powerful as some of these other paints. And then we'll see what it does. I'm going to add a fair bit more water to this one to try to get it um, to show a little bit more of its separation. Um, burnt Tiger's Eye Genuine. Let's try that one. Oh, interesting. This one applies much more smoothly. And it's still a bit of a gumminess from the binder, but it just seems to spread more smoothly. It's always interesting when they have the raw and burnt versions of the same mineral, but they behave so differently. Nature's really cool, guys. Okay, now we're into the purples. This is royal purple. And now we will start with purpurite genuine, amethyst genuine, and pseudogalite genuine, and hematite violet genuine. Let's see how these go. Okay, so first the purpurite. Oh, that's very purple. I thought I'd swatched this before, but I don't remember ever seeing anything quite that purple in any previous swatches. I've never owned this paint. Never owned most of these paints. Um, I love trying out paints, but I do try to limit myself when buying paints because it turns out that I use the same things over and over and over again. That's really gorgeous. I do really like that color. It's semi-opaque. Um, it's got a sort of gummy feeling to it, but then when I add some water, it does spread out quite nicely. Let's try to get some more pigment in there. And then see what this granulation looks like. This is a really beautiful like eggplant plum color, but it's going to develop some granulation, I think, as it dries. This is looking great. Okay, I'm going to, sorry, move these up. So here we have Amethyst. Genuine. So this is a paint that I got a few years ago from my own collection. I do really like it. It has a very subtle shimmer and because of that I painted one um, piece where I, I painted amethyst crystals using amethyst paint and I thought it was really neat for that. I did of course use other paints and other purples. Um, but then I ended up giving away my amethyst paint because although I really liked it in that context, it's really gorgeous color, it does have a little bit of sparkle in it. Um, and I found that that little bit of sparkle ended up in my water it ended up in all of my other pieces. Um, and I just, I, I couldn't really get over it, um, which is really too bad because this is a really gorgeous color. Now this is another case where, um, you know, what Daniel Smith says about the Primatex is that they're made from these pigments, um, but everyone I've spoken to who understands the structure of amethyst doesn't really believe that you could grind up amethyst and end up with anything that would 
develop a color this dark in these thin layers um, because amethyst is a crystal and the reason it develops some dark colors in some cases is because you'll have these laminar layers of many 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 layers of nearly clear um, uh, cells I guess or nearly clear um, particles and uh, you know, a thin layer like in paint would never look this dark um, if it was only ground up amethyst. So who knows what else they're putting in there, but isn't that a gorgeous color? Here we have Sugalite Genuine. Um, and so here again we have another sparkly color, much, much sparklier than the amethyst. Um, the amethyst only has a little hint of sparkles. Hugolite is just completely shimmery. It's also a little bit more opaque and lighter valued. Um, it's like fairy wings. Very pretty. So this is a paint that's, that I I'm really enjoying swatching, and I can't imagine what I would use it for. What, if you use Sugalite Genuine, what do you use it for? Let me know down in the comments below. And then the last in this purple card is going to be this Hematite Violet genuine okay okay so and this again has a little bit of a shimmer to it although I may have also brought in some shimmer from the sucalite by not rinsing out my brush properly let's try to make sure that I get as true a sample no I think it has a quite a bit of its own shimmer as well to tell. Um, it's quite a brown. It does have a little bit of a violet undertone, but it's quite brown. We'll see how it dries. Um, but whereas the other purples are, are very much, you know, mainly purple, this is mainly brown with a bit of a purple undertone. Beautiful. Okay, let's see if I can get, sorry, once again. Next we have metamorphic black. So these are going to be uh, things that are mostly in the black family. So here we have sodalite genuine, zoocyte genuine, hematite genuine, and black tourmaline genuine. Okay, so let's, first let's try the sodalite. Once again, I'm scrubbing with this brush. Um, so this is why I use a synthetic brush for swatching. So this is sort of a bluish black. Um, and I think it's going to show some substantial granulation. It might also show a little bit of sparkle. If you want a sparkly black, this might be your thing. Either that, or I've brought in sparkle from something I've previously swatched. Hard to tell. There's no nothing on the sheet about which of these colors are sparkly. Um, the sparkles do tend to show up a lot more clearly after the paint dries. Except in the case of like something like the Sugalite, which is so sparkly that you can see it very clearly right from the start. So Sodalite Genuine is here. Next we have Zoocyte. I'm curious to hear from you if you swatch your own paints or if you enjoy uh, swatching dot cards like these. Um, how do you keep track 
of the colors you swatch. Like, do you swatch them on uh, set paper? Do you make little swatch cards? Do you paint your own swatch cards or do you print them out or do you um, stamp them like I do? Let me know down in the comments below what your preferred method for swatching is. So I've recently restructured, so I'm re-swatching all of the paints that I have access to. So all of the paints that I own, all of the paints that my friends own, um, all of the paints that I can get these sample cards for. This is like a greenish black here. Again, very granulating. Next we're doing Hematite Genuine. Um, this is going to be a brownish black. Anyway, so I am swatching every paint basically that I can get my hands on and putting it in a gigantic swatch binder and sorting by pigment. Um, I hope to eventually photograph all of the different sets, like each pigment, photograph all of the different paints using that pigment. I have a spreadsheet that I've built up on my a website. Um, I'll link to it down below. Uh, where I've listed all of the single pigment paints by color. So this this wouldn't be included in there um, because the Primatec paints don't have pigment information listed, uh, but just to allow people to compare different brands um, using pigment numbers rather than uh, just names. Um, and I would probably photograph these as well. Uh, so people can take a look at those as well. Um, what I So black tourmaline, I'm having trouble determining what the undertones of this are. It's another black. Um, yeah, sort of bluish undertones as well. Okay, what the, all right, so that's what happens when I get distracted. Okay, next let's try Kingman Green Turquoise. So this is one of the most expensive pigments in the Daniel Smith line. Um, and it is a greenish turquoise color. Reminds me a little bit my friend Elijah over at Sela Paint Company also has something called the Cobalt Aqua, which is very similar to this. If you wanted to try this paint, but you don't have access to Daniel Smith or you don't want to buy a 30 something dollar tube, um, that's an option here. It's beautiful, very, very beautiful. Um, next we have a Diopside Genuine. So this is going to be another one of these very, very strong tinting greens. Um, I really enjoy these Primatec greens. Uh, this is a very clear green. Uh, you know, this is similar to some of what other brands might mark it as, something like a, like a Hooker's Green. Although like many of the Primatec greens, the Diopside Genuine develops quite a bit of texture. There we go, that's gorgeous. Okay, and then let's try Green Appetite Genuine. So Green Appetite Genuine has been uh, a frequent appearance in many of my palettes recently um, because I 
ended up with three tubes of it. Green Appetite Genuine has some crazy granulation. A much more muted... Oh, sorry. I'm painting this out over here. You don't see me where I'm painting this. Anyway, this Green Appetite Genuine is a paint that I've included in a lot of my palettes recently. I really like how, depending, if you let it uh, spread out on your palette, you can um, choose which of the tones within the green that you can pick out for separate areas a little bit, because it'll separate out even on your palette, and then you can um, just choose which of these colors you use. Um, so I really love that with that. Uh... So I don't know where this cut out. I'm sorry, um, at some point my footage cut out, uh, but I'm now painting out Lapis Lazuli, which is another one of these very expensive pigments. Um, has a rich history. It's the precursor. It's uh, before synthetic ultramarine was discovered or developed. Um, artists would use lapis lazuli for that tone. Um, and so it's a gemstone. It's very expensive. Before that, I swatched Kyanite Genuine, which is a muted blue, sort of grayish blue with a strong sparkle. And now Sleeping Beauty Turquoise Genuine. So um, there's a Sleeping Beauty Turquoise mine somewhere in the US. I'm tempted to say Arizona, but I might be completely wrong about that. Um, which has apparently been closed for a while. Um, so it's a little unclear whether Daniel Smith got some stock of turquoise from, like, originally from that mine, or whether it's just a similar shade of turquoise. Uh, they might have some information on their website there. They have very um, poetic descriptions of all of these paints. That is a beautiful turquoise. Um, this is an, this is an incredibly expensive paint, so I've never really bothered to try it. But then I, you, I've only ever tried really small samples from the regular dot card. Um, this larger sample is beautiful. That's absolutely gorgeous. I love that. That's so pretty. It's kind of like um, like a cobalt teal, but a little bit more muted. That's fantastic. I thought it would be really weak tinting, um, because that's all of the samples I've seen before, but most of those came from the little tiny dots. This doesn't really seem very weak at all. It seems quite strong. I really love that. I want to see if I can get my hands on some Sleeping Beauty turquoise. I wonder how much it costs. Probably a lot. All right, next, Blue Appetite. I recently got a tube of this um, because I liked the Green Appetite so much that I thought I might want to try the Blue Appetite. So far, I haven't loved the Blue Appetite as much as I've come to love the Green Appetite. Um, not that I dislike it, it's just not, I don't use it quite as much. Um, it is a muted blue and then it separates, it has a strong granulation, um, just like the Green Appetite. So I'm going to add a fair bit of pigment and a fair bit of water to the sample so that you can Watch as it dries. These are all really gorgeous colors. Oh, 
Okay. Is that it? No, there's gotta be, so that's it. Cool. Well, um, yeah. Okay, so this is the Primatec range of watercolors all swatched out. Um, and I'm going to take some close-ups. Ah! You hear that, internet? That is a deprived tiger who is now on my desk. Yeah, hi. Are you gonna say hello to the camera? Are you gonna say hello to the camera? Hey, what are you doing? Why are you on my desk? Are you helping again? Are you helping again? Yes, you're so helpful. My goodness. Ask. Why is there a cat all over my watercolor swatches? Why? 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 Why is there a cat? Thank you. I present to you the prettiest of the Primatex swatches. This is Neuron Genuine. This is a gray and furry watercolor who makes his way onto every one of my palettes. Yeah, are you going to help me wa wrap up this video? Mm-hmm. This is why I can't have nice things. Yeah. This. That's you. Okay, thank you so much to those of you who have stuck around until the end. Uh, after Neuron messed up my original ordering, I rearranged these swatches um, in more of a spectral order. And so here's some footage of all of these Primatech beautiful swatches all put together. Um, I hope you enjoyed the, this watching video. Let me know if you'd like to see more like this. I'll be back next week with more painting videos and sharing some of my techniques. Uh, if you enjoyed this, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you'd like to see more of my content. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>